so I'll start. Um, I'm going to talk about how to get designers involved in your project. Um, so a bit, a bit even more basic than than Raghu talked before. Um, so yeah, I also work on Nextcloud in, in the design team uh, since a long time already. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, so the short story of how to get designers involved is basically go to opensourcedesign.net/jobs and post what you need on the job board, on our job board of, of the Open Source Design uh, Collective. Uh, but the long story is, uh, is a bit longer and uh, I'm going to use examples that we learned from working on Nextcloud and that I also learned from working in other communities. And it's, yeah, very, very basic things uh, which have a lot of impact. So um, can I have a show of hands? How many people work on uh, an open source project? Okay. How many of you do not have any designer involved in that project. Okay. <laughs> or somewhat, maybe, also. <laughs> so um, this will be very useful for you, but this will also be very useful for people who are designers who work on a project and who want to improve. So even though it's kind of, or I, I consider them very basic things, uh, or I keep repeating them in projects, I think a lot of people or a lot of projects still don't do them. So um, yeah, uh, you'll see then. Um, just a small word about Nextcloud. Uh, you might have heard about the whole own cloud Nextcloud fork. So short story, Nextcloud is a community fork of, uh, of own cloud um, because we were unhappy with uh, some things, for example, that not everything was open source and uh, yeah, a bunch of other things. Um, so yeah, you can ask me later about it. But anyway, um, uh, this Nextcloud uh, is like an open source alternative to Dropbox and Google products for file sync, contacts, calendar, email, video chat, stuff like that. So um, yeah, it's quite an extensive project. Uh, you already heard about uh, Raghu that he um, maintains the calendar uh, or co-maintains the calendar as designer. So yeah, we have a bunch of components and uh, there's yeah lots of things that we learned during the years. So uh, first thing of four basic things is uh, to establish a culture of design. So. Uh, I was back when it was still own cloud. Um, I was like the fourth or fifth contributor, and I was the first designer um, in the in the project. And uh, yeah, it was when we were yeah very few people, and there wasn't even a company yet. And yeah, it was just like a few people hacking on a uh, uh, at a table and stuff. So the first thing, very first thing I did, because I come from a design background uh, and not from like a programmer or open source background, <coughs> very first thing I did was look at this and say, what the fuck is this? <laughs> so um, this, you can even see like I had trouble fitting it on the slide because there's so much stuff on it and so misaligned. And yeah, that's the, that's the own cloud one installation. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's pretty, I mean, I could point out like what's wrong with it, like alignment uh, of the fields, is, of the field labels to the left. Uh, the password, you need to retype the passwords. Uh, it's pretty much a drag. You need to choose the data directory or you can change it, which I don't even care about. Force SSL, like just do it. Um, all this stuff like date format, what, what does even like, what does G even mean? I have no clue. Um, probably you can tell me, but I, I don't even care. Um, <laughs> and then one of my biggest problems with the whole thing is um, the, the database. Like I remember, uh, horror nightmares of copying and finding uh, database credentials somewhere in, in some weird other subfolder or asking my web host uh, for that. And even with uh, like a bit of nerdy skill, that was difficult. So um, there uh, is also like a technical choice to usability in some sort. And uh, the, the, or that being, how it looks like now, that's the installation now, you see there's no database field by default because we use SQLite by default. Um, it's not 100% advised to use it for big installations, but that allows us, because SQLite, uh, if you know it or not know it, it's just a, simp a single file and uh, you don't need any, you don't need to create any username, password, credentials or whatever, it can all be done by the web server. So it's a technical decision that allows us to actually make it so simple. You just need to choose an admin username and password. We could just also like directly log you in and give you the credentials or have default credentials, but that would result in a lot of insecure installations. So we don't do that. Um, but yeah, we, we make it, uh, I'd like to think even simpler than the WordPress five minute install. Uh, and uh, 
Yeah, this, but you can still change storage database, so you can still modify uh, uh, two things. One is the database, so you can change it to MySQL or PostgreSQL or whatever you want, um, whatever you uh, implement. And um, then also to, um, you can change the storage um, path so that you can store it somewhere else. And all the rest is just done automatically. So um, the, um, yeah, so it's just username and password. It's basically, this is very similar to just the login screen, actually, and, and, and that's very simple. That still, though, leaves you with, you need to download it, you need to set the permissions and stuff like that. So you always need to know that in open source, we have this additional problem. We, d we don't have a sign-in button on the page. We have a download button, right? So that's a, that's a very, very different thing. So um, yeah, but, but that gets easier in some sort. Also, technical reason, with PHP 7, I think, at least, because you don't need to mess around with permissions so much anymore or on certain servers. So a lot of technical things interweave with the design decisions or with how the UX is at the end. And in this case, UX is, of course, the user experience of admins installing the, um, the software. OK, so that's the first thing. Um, and I think I've been talking so long about it now because I think it's so important that the setup process is easy because that's the first, uh, the first reason people turn around and, and don't use your project, like website and, and installation process, I would say. Next thing is uh, you have to care about details. So um, for example, uh, here uh, we have a, uh, a colleague of mine. Uh, he's actually more of a developer, uh, but does a bit of front end. Um, and uh, yeah, he opened that issue, or we, we basically did it together. At every meetup we now do, we have four um, meetups during the year. Uh, they're, they're like planning meetups or working meetups for the next version. And they're open, so everyone can actually attend. And um, what we established during these meetups is that we sit in a meeting room and we install the, the newest version or the, the current uh, development version and we, we just click through it as if we were like people new to the project and we just point out every single small thing. So you see like um, there's like wrong capitalization for example or white space issues or, or some uh, icon errors like it's white instead of black and stuff like that. It's very, very detailed things. So. Um, that, that establishes a, a cu general culture of design, a general culture of the, you probably heard about the no broken windows policy. So if you, yeah, if you don't see anything wrong, uh, then you're also less inclined to do wrong choices or, or you, you, you encourage people to, to do similarly nice looking things. Right? So that's, that's very important to, to um, yeah, do that with everyone. And everyone is in that room, like all the developers, all the other people working on it. So yeah, it, it just, uh, it brings everyone together on, on that this design um, uh, or experience base. Second thing is uh, be informative. So what does that mean? Uh, it's basically something such as s simple as just putting screenshots in your README, in your in your repository README. And like a lot of projects uh, I look at, uh, I, I go to their GitHub or to their, to their GitLab or to their repository anywhere, and they don't even have any screenshots, even though it is an app which probably has an interface. And there's like a ton of explanation, and it's like, it lists like, oh, we use like PostgreSQL and some blah, blah, blah cluster with some AngularJS, and I don't even care about that when I want to use it. So basic thing. Just a short explanation, like even, even those tags, I mean, are a bit nerdy, but uh, that's okay. Uh, so um, just short explanation and just a nice screenshot uh, so people can understand what they're actually looking at. So um, that's, that's very important. That's, that's one very small thing. So the people who uh, raise their hands, uh, if you don't do that yet, please do that now. And uh, because this is kind of, I mean, this is also similar to the website. So if you don't have a website, you just have a repository, do this. If you have a website, make sure your website has okay. short explanation and uh, uh, a screenshot. But most projects don't have a website yet, so just do this. Next, we scroll down in the readme. And then uh, we need a, some kind of a concise feature list explaining what the hell this actually does. Uh, so we have some funny emojis, also part of design. Uh, and uh, we just list some yeah, features or some important functionality of the app and explain what it does. And then we even have some more nerdy info, like we say, um, yeah, if you, wanna, if you wanna send encrypted emails, just use this browser extension and yeah, which libraries we use, for example, just for developers who also wanna get involved. 
and also what we have planned for the coming versions. So it's kind of like, yeah, being informative and being open about your process. Then we scroll e down even more. And the problem is always like, uh, yeah, oftentimes people or projects don't even have any setup info, like how the hell do I, do I make this thing run? Like I, I just download it and, and then what, right? You, you just clone the Git repository, which is already pretty difficult for many people. And then, yeah, I'm just left there and I see like an install.sh and I see like a grunt file or some shit like that. And I'm just utterly confused about what, what, I, what I need to do next. And so the one important thing is do not assume that everyone knows what they need to do with a make file or what, what, they, uh, yeah, what they need to do if they see a make file or something like that. Just write it out and make sure that it's yeah, very few commands. So I'm actually, um, I'm actually still complaining about this, like about two commands. So if it, like, if it can be, like just make it make, or I mean, nothing at all would be best, but if it actually needs to be, just make it one command. Um, because this, I always forget, like what, what I actually need to type and yeah. So um, yeah, that's also another important thing. Like for, for people who are actually, who wanna contribute and who are a bit, more technical maybe um, or less technical but would like to learn just spell it out like just write it out and and those are yeah the three important things in the readme actually i would say then third part like we also mentioned it uh, same same thing be welcoming and uh, i i like to repeat it because it's super important and uh, i'd like to think that this is one of the big reasons why uh, the next cloud design team is, is uh, so successful uh, the the First thing, for example, is tying into the whole make or grant file or whatever thing is that you need to remove barriers to entry. For example, we had this issue or we had this, this thought forever like, oh, should we have some CSS preprocessor, CSS in this case also uh, regarding design, right? Um, so like we, we, we could talk about like, I don't know, using, <coughs> using Composer for PHP, which we, which we also do um, in some parts. But this specifically is about the CSS, so it also concerns front-end designers. And so one thought was, yeah, do we use SCSS? Um, and we were discussing about it in the past already, and we were saying, ah, no, we didn't really want to use it because like, then people need to compile it. And then uh, this one contributor said, well, there is this PHP library which directly compiles it. So and Nextcloud being a PHP app, uh, you don't need to do anything else, right? So actually, it's it's seamless. So and I said, okay, if you can do it like that, like if you can, if you provide a pull request and if you make it, if you rewrite it, um, and uh, if you make it so that it just works, then that's okay. But otherwise, it's a barrier to entry, and that's not okay. So um, yeah, we're on a good way. Like this issue is still partly open, but most of it actually is moved already, and um, yeah, it's. It's very cool with the yeah with the additional bonus of not making it any more difficult, except you know the SCSS syntax is like, I mean it's almost the same as CSS, but uh, it's it's very easy very easy to learn. It's like not an entirely new technology, so you can have some optimizations or you can have some cool tools, but you still need to keep in mind that it needs to be simple. Then second thing. What I will also mention, I'm very happy that it's successful or that it works, is uh, two tags that we use, um, or yeah, we use many tags, but these I think are, they are one of the most important ones, uh, or two of the most important ones for uh, open source projects in general. One is the design tag. It's just like a, an umbrella tag for everything regarding interface design, UX design, any kind of design. We, we just chose the tag design. I actually got it from uh, Mozilla where they use uh, 13 different tags, I think, like UX feedback. So if there's missing feedback or if there's a spinner showing too long, then UX wording, I think when the, when the language is too technical or not understandable. So um, we just grouped it to one design tag because that makes stuff uh, much simpler. And then also the starter issue or junior job label, which is just for, for issues which are very good for people new to the project. So. And you, as you can filter with two tags, so uh, you can combine these tags and you can just see, oh, what can I do as a designer new to the project? So it's simple stuff like uh, some logo or icon is misaligned or um, there, there, there needs to be some CSS fixes or um, something is broken in Safari or whatever. Um, and yeah, 
some of the time, of course, we need to fix these things, but oftentimes we also just leave them open for a bit longer intentionally uh, to get more people involved. And this is also perfect for, for events, for like small hackathons, for example, uh, where, where um, for, for new people to get involved, that we have like a list of issues um, that yeah, need to be done. So um, that's, that's very, uh, that's, I would recommend that a lot. So everyone who r uh, raised their hands, again, uh, if you don't have a design tag, if you don't have a starter issue tag, please create them now and add issues to it. Like, um, and, and open issues if you don't have them yet. Like if you know of design issues in your project, uh, just, just open them and uh, yeah, communicate them openly. So yeah, I, I'm very happy that our design team is actually like, the biggest team in the entire organization. And I would say like, it's a pretty big team for any open source project. And I mean, of course, some people are more active, some people are less active. But in general, it, it gives like a great feeling that you can always just mention, uh, like GitHub has this add mention functionality um, that you can just add Nextcloud designers review, please, or what do you think of this? And as there are so many aspects, like Android app, calendar app, desktop, and stuff like that, uh, it's very cool that, that uh, yeah, people uh, um, get designers involved. And then also, some of these designers are in individual teams uh, of the apps, for example. So yeah, thanks to all these folks um, contributing. Um, so fourth thing, last thing, um, is uh, talk about design. Like make it, make it an actual topic. This is similar to the culture of design. Uh, actually say it in, I don't know, in tweets or in communication. Don't just say, hey, we do a developer meetup. Just say, either we do a contributor meetup or we do a developer <laughs> designer meetup or we do a contributor meetup, developers and designers are very welcome. Just basic stuff like that. For example, um, uh, also publish updates uh, which are specifically about design. Um, this is, uh, unfortunately, blogging is always something which is neglected, I have the feeling, and uh, we are guilty of that too. Um, but uh, yeah, sometimes we have like design team updates and it's like uh, uh, when we had a discussion at the conf conference, we have, a, we have a bunch of info, how to get involved, some feedback, what was good. And then also we had three uh, good questions that we that we discussed. For example, how is the design decided on? How to approach a new feature? And where is design help needed? Or how do I ask for it as an app developer? So, um, yeah, if it, if it's if it's discussed in this way at a at a developer meeting or developer designer contributor meeting, then uh, it's good yeah to notice like how you where you lack things and how to improve things. And uh, coming back to the first point also. Um, yeah, by the way, next cloud conference uh, will be in Berlin in August. Uh, and one thing that we say um, specifically there in the text, focus will be on coding, design, front end work, and testing. So we actually mention it. It's, it's just a small thing, right? We could just not mention that sentence, or we could just say, hey, every developer interested, just come around. But we specifically mention design, front end work. Um, so people of that area, designers, will feel welcome. And, and that's often all it takes uh, for, uh, for, for designers to contribute. So to recap, uh, have a culture of design, establish a culture of design of simple design, preferably, um, to, to yeah, make it, make it user-centered. Uh, be informative, explain what your project does in easy terms on your website or in your readme. Be very welcoming to new people in general, like this also, this doesn't only apply to, to projects who need designers. They, they, this applies to any project. Um, and uh, then also talk about design. Make it, make it a topic and, and uh, raise the profile of design. So uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, come contribute. And uh, yeah, please leave feedback uh, for the talks. And uh, yeah, you can talk to me here or um, on Twitter or GitHub or whatever. Thanks a lot.